Well, good morning. We're joined today by the FEMA Administrator, Deanne Criswell, of course, also by Kevin Guthrie, our Division of Emergency Management Director, as well as Major General Haas from the Florida National Guard. Uh, yesterday morning, uh, Hurricane Idalia made landfall. Uh, the state of Florida immediately began uh, response operations, uh, including search and rescue, debris cleanup, and power restoration efforts. Uh, there has been um, significant damage, particularly along Florida's Big Bend, uh, but the community is resilient, and we are going to work hard to make sure people get what they need. Uh, urban search and rescue teams, National Guard, Coast Guard, Florida Fish and Wildlife, Florida State Guard, uh, have been involved in, in search and rescue efforts. Uh, there's still reports rolling in, but as of last night, there were approximately 40 successful rescues made, uh, including 29 uh, by the Florida National Guard. Uh, our fish and wildlife officers assisted with the medical evacuation yesterday, and they are conducting high water and welfare checks. Uh, these efforts are continuing, and they will continue until there is no longer a need. Uh, we are working hard to restore power across the state of Florida. As of 6 a.m. today, there are approximately 146,000 power outages reported across the state, uh, but power is being restored quickly. Uh, thus far, 420,000 accounts that lost power during the storm have been restored. And the bulk of the outages at this point are in that Big Bend region, a lot of the rural counties that bore the brunt of the storm. And those are uh, counties that will uh, have co-ops, and they are working to accept the mutual aid from the linemen that we have. All the linemen that were here, the tens of thousands, uh, they are here still. They have not been released, uh, and they're going to be working on particularly that area to get people back. There's parts of it that are 100 percent out, like in Taylor County, and so that is uh, priority number one to start getting those reconnected. Now, some of that stuff may require more than just connecting the power lines. If you have real significant structural damage, if there's damage to a substation, that requires a little bit more. But Kevin, Kevin will probably provide a little bit of an update on that. Uh, but the reality is we've got a lot of people on the ground, and this is a really, really big priority. Uh, also, priority has been clearing impacted roadways. Florida Department of Transportation you know, has cleared the vast majority of impacted roadways. Uh, all state bridges, including the Cedar Key Bridge, uh, have been cleared, and that happened within 12 hours of landfall, so we really appreciate them doing that. The 15-mile stretch of I-10 that was closed yesterday in Madison County uh, was uh, cleared and reopened uh, last night, and so that is open uh, today going forward. We have requested uh, from the federal government a major disaster declaration for all 25 counties uh, that fell under the hurricane warning. This will allow us to start debris removal and will provide funding for individual assistance, which includes shelter and temporary housing for impacted individuals. Schools, we're going to have 30 of the 52 districts that closed during the uh, storm uh, are open today, and an additional eight will be open tomorrow. And our uh, Commissioner of Education, Manny Diaz, is working with those Big Bend counties uh, to, to get them back up and running as quickly as possible. We're also fulfilling missions for counties. There have been 1,100 missions that have either been fulfilled or are in process of being fulfilled. So the things that may be necessary, uh, particularly in some of these hard-hit areas, uh, fuel, water, um, MREs, tarps, all that stuff, uh, we, we have an abundance of and we'll be providing that as needed to the affected communities. If you want to help out, there is a way to do it at the Florida Disaster Fund. Uh, this has already raised millions of dollars. We would love to be able to, to raise millions more to help those hard-hit areas. And you can go to floridadisasterfund.org, floridadisasterfund.org, if you would like to make a contribution. I know we've had a lot of folks in the business community express interest in doing that, and, and we certainly would welcome that, and it will make a big difference for people in this time of need. We're going to continue working and, and doing uh, whatever needs to be done to get people back on their feet. I'm going to be traveling down, touring uh, some of the uh, hard-hit areas uh, like Cedar Key and, 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 and Steen Hatchie uh, and, and some of the other areas uh, to get assessment. We were not able to access those areas yesterday cleanly. Uh, now, now we're going to be able to do it. 
and we will uh, report back on, on what we see and any actions that will be necessary as a follow-up. I want to thank uh, Administrator, Administrator Criswell for being here, and I'm going to turn it over to her, and then you'll hear a report from Kevin Guthrie. Thank you, Governor, and good morning, everybody. You know, first, I just want to uh, express our commitment, the federal government's commitment to continue to support uh, the governor and the team here in their ongoing response and then the, the recovery efforts here in Florida. Uh, we have received the uh, governor's uh, request for a major disaster declaration, and that is in process right now. Um, and as President Biden has stated uh, in, in numerous phone calls, we are committed to bringing the entire federal family in here to continue to support. Uh, we do have our urban search and rescue teams and um, our great partners at the Coast Guard that have been assisting with some of the initial search and rescue efforts around the way. Uh, why I'm here today is to, to join the governor and see firsthand, see firsthand the impacts that the communities have had so we can determine what level of assistance and what other programs um, we'll need to bring in to help support those people that were in the storm's path, help them on their road to recovery. And so what's next is we are going to see what this damage is. We are going to process the governor's request for a major disaster declaration as quickly as possible. Um, and we are going to make sure that we always have the resources here from the federal family to support the the current efforts, but also the ongoing recovery efforts that may be needed um, in these communities that were impacted by Hurricane Edalia. Thank you. Kevin, thank you, sir. Once again, Governor, thank you for your leadership. I appreciate everything you're doing for us all. Uh, I'm going to have a couple of graphics to go over today, but um, one of the things that I will start with is pick up where the uh, governor left off on power. Um, we uh, have every available resource in there. Uh, we have talked to um, Duke Energy. Uh, Duke is working with the co-ops locally to make sure that we have every available lineman uh, in that area, making sure that we can get uh, that power back on. I think some things to set some expectations. Uh, this, this infrastructure grid uh, is completely different than the infrastructure grid that is in uh, Lee County, Fort Myers, and that greater uh, Lee, Lee County area. Lee County is obviously a core urban type uh, issue. This is a issue where we have miles and miles and miles of rural area that may service one or two residents. So we have more than enough people to restring all the line. But again, it's going to be a little bit different look, a little bit different feel. We may only be able to bring on a handful of customers with a 10 mile stretch of uh, line. So we are going to do it. We're going to get it done. I told the governor we're going to try to get mo the majority of people back on in the next 48 hours. Uh, but we will be uh, constantly in contact with Duke Energy, uh, Melissa, and then Mike Borkland with the uh, Florida Co-op Association. Uh, today I want to talk more about what it is that you should be doing now that the disaster has hit and you are getting ready to start taking your debris to the edge of the roadway. It will help us immensely. It will help your local governments immensely, the, the solid waste uh, individuals, if you will separate your debris at the roadway. When you put it at the roadway, number one, don't put it in the road, put it at the road's edge. We need to be able to get up and down the roadways with emergency vehicles and other uh, crews as we, as we need to. So make sure you separate your interior debris removal. These are your sofas, your couches, the bedding, things of that nature. Put it in a pile. Put your muck and gut. So what do we talk about muck and gut? This is the mud that came in your home. This is the wet sheet rock, the wet carpet, the wet materials. All of those things that are wet that you're taking out of your home, you're cutting out of your home, you have a contractor cutting it out of your home, maybe you have a volunteer organization cutting that out of your home, we're going to want that in a separate pile. We want to make sure that all of your, um, uh, all of your vegetation is in a pile. We want to separate white goods. White goods are your appliances. Make sure those are in a separate pile. And then the last pile that we talk about is uh, your, house, your uh, clean and sanitized household hazardous waste. If you've got cleaning materials or something like that that uh, have become damaged, this includes paint cans, anything that is, has some type of hazardous uh, situation to it, we're going to want that in a separate pile. So please make sure that that is all done. Uh, when you get those um, flood structures, um, if you're doing it yourself, highly recommend that you go probably 6 to 12 inches above the watermark. Before you do that, take a picture of it. Make sure you take a picture of that internal watermark inside your home. 
the, take a picture of it outside your home. But make sure you go above the line. Don't go right at the line. Go above the line. You're going to want to dry out those studs. Make sure you clean those studs appropriately before you start sheetrocking back in. Again, clean and sanitize everything. Um, I was talking to uh, the Deputy Surgeon General, uh, Dr. Ken Shepke. You know, you don't want to be walking around in brackish water. There are, you know, um, diseases and whatnot that can be in that uh, particular water. You want to make sure that you clean and sanitize everything in your home, so please make sure you do that, and then re reinstall and replace as, as needed. So we're going to talk more in the coming days about recovery things and recovery tips that you all can do better um, uh, for yourself at the house and how to get that stuff uh, accurately to the uh, road's edge. We have received more than 600, and, uh, I'm sorry, more than 1,000 missions. Uh, and the men and women behind me in this room are either actively coordinating or uh, have completed those 1,000 missions. Uh, we have completely closed out 275. Now, I don't want you to think that we have, you know, well over 800 or so. They're just kind of flailing around out there. What that means is uh, when we say it's completed, that means is it is completely done, demobilized back home, and we are actually doing invoices and paying for that. So completed means it is completely done. It doesn't mean that people are still mobilizing and getting to wherever they need to get to it means that it is completely closed out search and rescue operations remain ongoing with the support from the florida national guard and law enforcement partners i want to thank uh, uh, the general staff also uh, executive director roger young staff at fwc those guys have been doing some really really uh, great work over the last uh, uh, 48 hours so thank you again general at this time no deaths have been reported to the medical examiner's commission no deaths. Um, uh, we, you know, the governor and I really hit that hard. Evacuate, evacuate, evacuate. If you need power, please evacuate. So uh, it seems that people have heeded that call, um, and we're grateful for that. The state emergency response team has continued to work our uh, work, working to meet the needs of survivors, supporting our responders, and continuing recovery efforts in these communities. We have a recovery team embedded in the EOC behind me, working with our FEMA counterparts to expedite recovery processes and ensure we can assist the Big Ben with needed recovery efforts. We are working very closely with FEMA to establish recovery resources, including disaster recovery centers, mobile registration intake centers, and even disaster support assistance teams in, or I'm sorry, disaster survivor assistance teams in these locations. After disaster, scammers often attempt to take advantage of survivors. I encourage everyone impacted by Adelia to be vigilant and report any suspicious activity or price gouging to the Attorney General's office. Please do that. That number is 1-866-966-7226. If your home has received significant flood damage, ensure that your electricity is off and that you are wearing the appropriate safety gear before you enter that home. More information on mucking and gutting, as we've talked about today, is available on floridadisaster.org slash guide. Uh, some safety tips that we want to ensure that you do. Please make sure that when you're operating a chainsaw, you're doing it safely. Please make sure you're wearing goggles. Make sure that you're covering your head, protecting your head. If you do not know how to operate a chainsaw, do not do it. Do not get on ladders. You know, the governor and I have talked about this in the past. You know, it's generator safety, it's chainsaw safety, it's ladder safety. Those are the three big things that end up causing people to have deaths in post-disaster impacts. And all of those are avoidable deaths. Do not get on a ladder at the top rung with a chainsaw in your hand, trying to hang on with the other one and cut off a limb. That, that is not the way to do this, folks. Please do it safely. Call in somebody to get that done. Don't fly drones where responders are at. That will inhibit air operations. It will inhibit other operations if we do not know what's going on with the drones. So please do not fly drones where responders are at. We've talked about generator safety 20 feet away from all open windows and open doors. That includes your garage. Do not open your garage and run a generator in your garage. Get it away from your home. And uh, volunteer organizations. Volunteer organizations are your best bet for getting assistance on chainsaw operation, debris removal on your private property. That can all be done through our website here, as well as Volunteer Florida. We, will, we have right behind me, right behind where we're standing, is a room full of volunteer 
uh, disaster organizations that are ready to come and help you. So please make sure you reach out to you, to us, or to your local emergency management agency for a list of volunteers that are willing to come and help you at your home. Thank you, Governor. And I just want to uh, uh, reiterate something that Kevin said about the um, evacuations and listening really to the local officials. I think those officials in those in those really hard hit counties, I think, did a good job. I think uh, citizens responded very appropriately. And then to be here where you have a storm hitting close to 130 mile an hour, just under a cat four and uh, and not as of now have any reported fatalities. Um, it's probably something that, that most people would not have bet on, you know, four or five days ago, uh, knowing knowing how strong the storm was going to get. So so my hats off to the people on the ground there who, who did a, did a good job. And also just it, it should be said that this was a, a pretty solid forecast. If you look, you know, we were back here this weekend and it was a big bend impact and there been a, there was a little variation along the big bend. But but the bottom line is uh, these forecasts were, were were pretty doggone accurate, uh, particularly compared to, to what happened with Hurricane Ian, where, you know, we went in a matter of 48 hours to potentially having a, a big bend impact and then all of a sudden, you know, uh, migrating all the way down to southwest Florida. Th this one was was there. It was keyed in. And it, and it was uh, it was very very accurate. So so I appreciate that and uh, that that was great. Okay, do we have any questions? I know damage assessments are ongoing, but uh, is there any damage you're finding to state buildings, including prisons, in the past? I don't think so. Do we have any? Not, not reports yet. I mean, so you know, the storm just went through yesterday. So I think today will be an important day to be able to get around and and, and look at everything and, and get a better assessment. But there's not been any specific report about any state buildings. Describe the damage that you saw yesterday and compare that to Hurricane Ian last year. Well, what I saw was just a lot. I mean, there's a massive amount of debris because you have a lot of trees in, in this part of the state. And, uh, you know, there were trees knocked down. They would knock down power lines. Uh, there were there were branches and all kinds of stuff kind of everywhere. You did see structural damage to buildings. I saw roofs torn off of businesses. Uh, we saw uh, uh, other types of, of hurricane damage. There's no question. You know, Ian was different because where that hit, uh, I mean, you saw the boats. I mean, it would take boats and move the boats, you know, hundreds of yards, uh, uh, even thousands of yards, and they'd just be in the middle of a field somewhere. And you're like, how does that happen? And so that was, I think, a level of power that it came in basically at a Category 5. Uh, and then it was in a much more populated area. So more opportunity, I think, to have destruction, whereas I think this one, you know, there was definitely a lot of destruction, but it was so much debris and so much uh, woods, and that's just going to require a lot to be able to, to, to clean all that up. It appears that most of the uh, power outages are in about six to eight counties, and, and the state believes that we can have power restoration within the next 48 hours. So, um, so right. So, so the, the the outages are primarily the the Taylor, the Madison, uh, a little bit of of Levy, uh, Suwanee, Dixie, Wakulla, uh, those types th those types of counties. Right, basically, right in the path of the storm. And so, uh, what Kevin said yesterday is um, that there will be significant progress within 48 hours. Uh, I don't think that, that we'd be in a position to say that it could be fully restored be just simply because if there's structural damage, uh, you have going to have to rebuild some of that stuff. If it's reconnect, we've got the people there, you know, that's going to be able to get done. If it's rebuild, that just there's just more that goes into that. But, but suffice it to say, for the number of customers that are out, to have 146,000 out and us to have tens of thousands of additional linemen, you know, that's a pretty good ratio. So I think people could, could rest assured that there's a lot of resources being put on this, on this mission to be able to get them up, up and running as quickly as possible. Just to be clear, did, did the state ask FEMA for the 100% um, reimbursement on, on CAT A and CAT B, which is the debris removal and, uh, and, and extra help and whatnot? What was our request for? So our, our request at this at this time was for expedited uh, an expedited okay. major assistance declaration, and then we will write once we get that. Then we'll go back into writing letters about requesting additional assistance. Yes. Okay. 
All right, well, we're going to head down. Uh, the administrator is going to uh, join us, and so we're going to hit a lot of the, the most significantly affected spots. And then, uh, you know, we will be back, um, you know, in, in, in Tallahassee later today. But uh, I just appreciate everybody who's working hard on this. There's still a lot of wor work to do, but there's been a lot of good stuff that's been done. So thank you.